usually the the niche is sort of it's a niche is a is a sub segment of a larger segment. So by proving the value for that small sub segment, the, what you're hoping is, and this is sort of like Jeffrey Moore's crossing the chasm. What you're hoping is is that you can take that win that you've had in the small segment and expand it out into the broader segment and then to adjacent. But the thing is, is that if you can't do the small segment, you can't do the bigger segment, yeah. right? I mean, that's really the point, right? And it's something that you're, it's more controllable. If you focus on a larger market, you're no better off. You can't even prove to be a larger market. So the thing is, is that when people focus on a larger market, what they do is they Google, you know, any reports that say how many people own smartphones and they start this whole right target market you know there's 14 there's 7 billion people on the planet you know 1.2 billion of them use iPhones you know 750 million of them are you know whatever on Facebook and Twitter and you like do this top-down funnel until you prove to yourself that you have a market of 500 million people who are going to spend $99 a year and therefore my total market size. And you can just see it. I can actually put this in a spreadsheet and I can tweak the numbers of what my growth is going to be year over year. And lo and behold, it comes out to be a hockey stick. And then I show it to an investor and they give me a lot of money and I'm on my way, right? And it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. One, one point. So, so, so the, what, what you do with the niche market is that you're finding among a, people, a, a number of people that you can control, what is that value that I'm producing for them that they can get passionate about and creative about. And then you expand that market segment and you start testing whether that works outside of that, that niche market and you're now going to adjacent markets. The mistake people make about thinking about niche markets is the assumption that you're just gonna stay with that niche market, hoping the niche market grows. The niche market part of it is really only for the testing to nail that core value proposition, to find out who is the market segment that really loves it. And then that, it's just simply to move from what's unknown to known. And then once it's known, now you're executing, now you're trying to scale. And you may fail at scaling, but the testing is when you're in the, the niche segment, not that that's your you know, end ambition. Who was Facebook's original segment? Uh, students. Not even that, it was, it, was, it was kids in his dormitory. Isn't that a niche segment? I mean, the, 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 the problem with that argument, which I hear all the time, of course, is you look at Facebook, what did I see their stats today? 1.5 billion active engaged users. So people look at that stat, right? Multi-billion dollar company, and then they look at the startup, and they go, oh, shouldn't the startup act like that 1.5 billion engaged user company? How does a startup behave like that? That startup actually started like a startup. So shouldn't the startup act like the startup that was Facebook startup and not Facebook as the billion dollar company? So Facebook actually started exactly that way, a narrow market segment, a dormitory. And then it went to the friends of the people in the dormitory. And then it went to the college campus. And then it went to several other college campuses. And even by 2004, after Zuckerberg had moved to Palo Alto, uh, and, and uh, Facebook was spreading around college campuses, Mark Zuckerberg was asked the question, what's your vision for Facebook? And Mark Zuckerberg said, oh, well, you know, some people want to change the world. I'm hoping to make a really cool college directory. <laughs> so, I mean, even in 2004, he didn't know where this stuff was going.